The German stick grenade is likely the most recognisable weapon of World War II, but this German invention was also used in large numbers during the First World War. Its appearance is entirely different to the grenades of the Allied forces, and was even nicknamed the Potato Masher by some of these men. But how good was the stick grenade? In this video, we answer this question and see how effective it could be in combat. If you enjoy this video and want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button. It's free and really helps the channel reach more history lovers like you. The stick grenades of World War I were very similar in size and design to the final models seen produced during the Second World War. The shape of the grenade is the most obvious characteristic that distances itself from similar weapons of its time, but if we look further, there are many more differences. First and foremost, this was more of a concussion grenade than a fragmentation grenade, which is what the Allied forces used. For example, the American Mark II grenade had a thick metal outer casing. This meant that when it exploded, it had a lethal range of around 5 metres, but could inflict casualties with shrapnel out to 15 metres. It was therefore much more effective in open areas. The M24 German stick grenade, which was probably the highest produced variant, had a relatively thin outer casing. It therefore produced less shrapnel, but a higher explosive radius, and was much more useful in confined spaces. To counter its drawback, the Germans created a fragmentation ring which could be slipped over the top and create more flying debris during the explosion. Another way to produce a higher explosion was a field-made bundle grenade. This was essentially a group of six explosive ends removed from their sticks and tied around the end of a singular grenade. This gave it much greater power and could be used against armoured vehicles or against bunkers. The two drawbacks though was the time it took to make one of these in the field, as well as the weight added. This meant that the grenade lost a lot of its throwing range. The grenade's priming process was also a lot different to the allied versions. At the base was a small metal cap which needed to be screwed off. Inside the hollowed out wooden handle was a cord which needed to be pulled. Once this happened, it would cause friction, igniting phosphorus inside, taking around 5 seconds before the explosive contents went off. Comparing this to the Allied grenades which required the user to pull a pin, allowing the spoon to fly off before it began its 5 second delay prior to explosion. A much more simple process. Another disadvantage was indeed its shape. The Allied grenades were small enough to be stuffed into pockets, but with the long stick, this limited the places a German soldier could keep his grenades. It also meant they could carry less than their Allied enemies. In most World War II images, you'll see German soldiers stuffing them into their belts or boots for easy access. But with this disadvantage came perhaps its greatest advantage. Its shape allowed it to be thrown a much greater distance than other grenades, estimated to be at least double the length. Given it's more of an offensive weapon, this allowed soldiers to throw it at a much safer distance when attacking a strong point. Further, when defending, it could keep those trying to take their position further back. So despite its drawbacks, the German stick grenades of World War II arguably performed better in some situations than the Allied versions, which is perhaps why countries such as China and Japan copied their design. Which grenade do you think was more effective overall, the Allied or German version? Let us know your answer in the comment section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.